Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope your uh, mission trip is going great so far. So I guess this is Thursday morning. Um, so I, I'm really proud of you guys for doing the work that you're doing. And I want to kind of relate to you a little bit of what I did on a mission trip just recently that I hope can encourage you as you go out to serve at Shiloh today. Um, I was in Guatemala a couple months ago and it was on uh, a Wednesday, halfway through our work week. And my team that day was my son Jonathan and my uh, son's father-in-law, Stan. And we were working on building stoves for the people. These, these stoves that we build basically help to uh, eliminate all the carbon monoxide and all the poisonous gases inside the homes. And so, you know, we're building these, these stoves and we go to this one place to build. And, and there's a grandma, her three daughters, and each daughter that has two kids. So there's the grandma, the mom, uh, three moms, uh, six kids. So the, the grandma's grandkids is kind of you know what I'm going to focus on here. So we, we build the stoves, three of them, well, one for each of the, of the moms. And we're getting ready to leave. And my son turns to the grandma, the oldest lady there, and says, is there anything that we could pray for you for? And you've got to do this through an interpreter, um, which I don't think, you know, you've got to do there at Shiloh unless you have somebody with a southern accent or something. But um, you speak it through the interpreter and she asks the grandma, you know, anything we can pray for you for? And the grandma says, yeah, uh, if you could pray for our economy, for, for money, and then for the health of my family, especially for my two little grandchildren that are sick with breathing problems. And as soon as she said that, I knew who she was talking about. Because the third place where we built a stove, there was a baby hanging in a hammock from the rafters. I don't know how old that baby was, less than a year old, you know, maybe just a couple months old, I don't know for sure. And just two feet away from where that baby was hanging up in the air on the hammock, on the ground was the wood fire that had been burning with the old traditional method of cooking, which is what produces all that poisonous gas and releases all that carbon monoxide up into the home, which was really poisoning that little baby's lungs. And we built that stove to eliminate that problem. So Jonathan bows his head and he prays for the family. And it was just really uh, an, an awesome, cool moment. And as we were going away from there, I think I kind of realized I knew that baby's name. That baby's name was Jesus. Now, some of you smart people are probably watching this and you think, hey, wait a second, Bob. Yeah, see that, right, man? I took a couple of years of Spanish in high school. It's Jesus. No, 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 no. That baby's name wasn't Jesus. It was Jesus. And the reason I said that is because of what Jesus said in Matthew 25. And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. That little baby in that hammock was one of the least of these. We were doing it for him. We were doing it for Jesus. And when you go out to serve at Shiloh today, you're going to come in contact with maybe some people, some guys, some girls that live down there. And I want you to realize that their name is Jesus. Because if you're serving him with love, you're serving the king. God bless you on your mission trip today.